Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella. Usually you hear me say, it's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock, it's Trump week. You won't be hearing that today because it is Wednesday, it is 11 o'clock, but the name of the new show is Rediscovering America. And why have we changed the name of the show? Because the name Trump week is over. Uh, the election is over. Although that Donald Trump has not conceded the election to Joe Biden, as far as we're concerned, uh, the name of the show is, is history. It's gone. So uh, welcome to the new show, Rediscovering America. It will be every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. I'd like to introduce my guests for Rediscovering America, Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Good morning, everyone. Uh -huh. Thank you and welcome to Rediscovering America. Uh, morning, Tim. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, we're still going to be, I hate to say it, but the reality is we're still going to be talking about Donald Trump. There's no way around it. We have 70 some, 70 some odd days between now and January the 20th, 2021. Although we'd like to focus on what Joe Biden's going to do and his vision for America, um, we're not going to be able to, to escape the gravity uh, the atmosphere of Donald Trump. So Jay, here we are. We just had uh, the um, Georgia announce that they're going to do a recount. Joe Biden still has a majority in the electoral college votes. He certainly has four or five million more votes on the popular count. Yet we have Donald Trump who refuses to concede. And worse yet, we have his administration uh, refusing to concede. And uh, I think most of that's out of fear and intimidation. What hypnotic effect does Donald Trump have, not only on his Senate, uh, excuse me, the senators and the House representatives that are the GOP, but what hypnotic effect and control does he have on his own administration? I think it goes deep into the vertical cortex. <clears throat> you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a flaw in humanity. It happened in Europe in the 30s. It's people believe lies. They believe lies in large numbers of lies and large numbers of people. And we have that here. It's kind of a social virus. We have it here. It's very hard to explain. There have been a lot of articles trying to explain it. The reality is that uh, the, the, the 70 million that voted for Trump don't give a rip about the 70 million who won the election. Uh, it's quite extraordinary that they would be so disrespectful of their fellow Americans. But that's what we have. The other thought I'd like to bring to your attention is, is the notion that these political officials took an oath of office to protect, defend the Constitution of the United States, every single one of them. And this is clearly creating a constitutional crisis. Uh, it is violation of the Constitution. Um, and, you know, you just you have to wonder rhetorically, you have to ask yourself, uh, what happens when you make a, a, an oath of office and then you obviously patently breach the oath of office. And what happens when, you know, 50 senators talk to each other and all agree that they are collectively going to breach their oath of office? Is that a conspiracy? Is that treason against the Constitution of the United States? It's just a rhetorical question. Yeah. Well, what should be done about it? I mean, specifically, what sort of uh, reprimand should the GOP senators and all the, all the people that are now loyal to Donald Trump and refusing to acknowledge the reality of this election what what ramifications should they experience in the future? Well, they'll have to be voted out of office next time. But the problem is that we saw the opportunity to vote them out of office this time, and they were not voted out of office this time. So I'm sad to say about that. But I think the you know, the words of the day are the, the last words that uh, Joe Biden used in his uh, press conference yesterday. And somebody asked him, um, you know, are they going to come around? Are they going to start acknowledging you're the president? And he said, yes, they will. They'll, they'll come around. They'll well, come Joe around. Biden is an optimist, as we all know. Um, I'm concerned. So let's look at the ration. Let's look at the logic of Donald Trump refusing to accept um, the vote count for his retainment of the office of president. Yet he's more than happy to accept the results for the down, down ballot uh, candidates that won election. Uh, all the senators and the governors, those are fine. He doesn't have an issue with those, those, those victories. And it's the same ballot. Yeah, very interesting point. 
So you take that part of the ballot you like and you disregard that part of the ballot you don't like. The selective uh, contest on, on the vote. Shouldn't um, he be lampooned for this very point? Tim, he's being lampooned right now on this show on Rediscovering America. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. I'd like to see a few of my uh, journalistic brethren join suit. <laughs> okay, Jay, thank you very much. Say, so, Stephanie, what are your thoughts about the refusal of Donald Trump um, accepting the results? And, and more importantly, at what point do 74 million people who voted for Joe Biden say enough's enough? I'm going to say uh, it has affected me to uh, my core, especially my clock, because I got all screwed up on time this morning because I'm so disturbed uh, about what I'm hearing and seeing. So I just wanted to make the point that yesterday I heard several, at least two uh, major uh, commentators um, um, in, say things like, like Chris Coons, uh, and there's another one of that stature too, that the senators are very afraid and actually terrified of Trump. And so that what's going on under the radar is a fear uh, at, at every level, not, not only for their careers, but especially now for their careers because Trump will try to get back in the next election. And they have no doubt that he will be energized to do that. So I'm understanding now that in fact, there are actual physical threats on all these people and their children if they don't, a, to a physical harm, much less mental duress and need as Dr. Fauci has told us what his family has to go through. So we have to accept that some really dark stuff is on is pressuring all of these people. I, I'm grateful to know of it because I'm utterly despondent over the illogic and the disrespect of our system and the lack of any uh, recognition of our real constitutional meanings. Um, I'm very glad to know there's some some explanation of this, but that doesn't that doesn't take away that right now there is no respect from one half of the country. Okay, so again, at what point do 74 million Americans say, or how do they de uh, demonstrate their displeasure that Donald Trump is not releasing the reins of power? Um, now, there was a report, <coughs> excuse me, there was a report that Donald Trump may come around and say he'll accept the results of the election, but he'll never concede the election. Yes, I believe that. I, he is incapable of conceding. In my moments of desperation, I was thinking, well, maybe I will just respect some of the things that <laughs> the other side does and exercise my own Second Amendment rights. I have an extra parking place and I could put a tank in there. So I was thinking if we'd be allowed to park. <laughs> Don't bring the tank to Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, but no, I don't need to get a gun. I need to get the tank with the automatic weapon on it. Again, okay. a full-blown <laughs> expression. Of All right. Life. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Cynthia, questions to you. We have the hench. I call them the henchmen because uh, it seems to me they're very unpatriotic at this point, and that is Mitch McConnell, Pompeo, Lindsey Graham, and all the other GOP senators. Not all of them, though. And I'll mention the ones that have come out and and have acknowledged the results of this election. And that was particularly Senator Baker of Massachusetts. And we have um, Mitt Romney. But uh, other than that, we have Chris Christie and uh, Cavuto on Fox that, you know, the line is broken that these four members or these four individuals, and I think there's a few more, that have said, okay, reality is as such. Joe Biden has won. So, Cynthia, what do you think we should, uh, what do we have holding for these, these henchmen and what is their future? And, and at what point do we say, you're just, you know, you're going along with the emperor clothes syndrome? Well, that's a pretty big question because what do we do? You know, um, I've been a, a strong advocate for the fact that we have to hold Donald Trump accountable for all of the things that he has done while in office in order to show his base and other people that this kind of behavior is not tolerated. There are consequences 
when you work with Russia to get yourself elected, you get in trouble. That's what needs to be said to what all- What kind of consequences? What kind of consequences do you think there ought to be uh, metered out here? Well, I think, that I personally think Trump should go to jail for some of the things that he has done um, in regards to uh, jeopardizing our national security by the way that he has dealt with Russia. That alone is enough for me. And then there's so many other things that are there too. You can't just lie to the American people for four years, five years, and expect to just get away with it. And it's okay. But you know, I've spent the last couple of days, you know, the other day I said, you know, I've done so good. I feel great. I'm not anxious or anything. Yeah, it only took a day and a half to get right back up there again. <laughs> And I'll tell you what I was doing is I was looking at what these people are saying. What are the Trump supporters saying? They're saying that this is stolen. They're saying that any minute now, we're going to find out that really it was the Democrats that were involved in fraud in this election. Well, with everything I've been saying about Trump manipulating the electronic voting, I'm afraid now, since he didn't get away with that to work, right? Um, now he's going to say, he's going to expose it and, and try to blame the Democrats for it. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, after, after, after all the lawsuits have been settled, after all the recounts have taken place, what do 70 million voters now say uh, as far as uh, Trump's, you know, do they still cling to Trump's claim that the election was stolen and yet the lawsuits have been settled and the vote tallies have been recounted? Then what? I'm not sure if you're still talking to me or if you went yes, to Yes, yes. I'm still talking to you, Cynthia. Well, I'll tell you what they're saying is that this is a stolen election. The Democrats stole it. Uh, they're, they all believe it. They have bought full in to the lies. And, and every time I tried to correct them with the truth, all I got was just hate thrown at me. Yeah, well, just, we're dealing with a belief system, so logic doesn't always enter into the conversation. No, it okay. doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Hey, Winston, right now, um, Donald Trump is not conceding, is not acknowledging the victory to Joe Biden. Joe Biden has been prevented from having any uh, transitional funds um, granted. He is also being barred from uh, security briefings. If you're China or North Korea or Russia, what are you thinking right now? Oh, they're so happy. That seeing chaos in America, and as we lectured the world on the need to uphold democratic standards, accept valid election results, that that pulpit's going down. But you know what? I was very heartened to uh, watch Angela Merkel, the current um, leader of the free world, uh, who is in office, give the most sane, sober. Uh, when you watch her, you think, "Oh gosh, what?" E even if we could have one minute of that during the entire Trump presidency. And she doesn't mention it by name. She just says congratulations to Joe Biden and congratulations to Kamala Harris, who have, uh, you know, she's the first woman. She's a child of immigrants. She says you, uh, the relationship between America and Europe is, is, is critical. Between Germany, it's our strongest ally. And so she's just gone back as if these last four years did not exist. And watching us, so as we're moving forward, Right, because this show is now called Rediscovering America or Reclaiming America or uh, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's out with the old and back with the good. And, uh, you know, there's a, a, I think it was Politico had a, a great article, how Biden can wind down the imperial presidency so, and say these excesses that we've allowed that happened over these last four years, all these norms where we thought they would never be shattered. They need to be dialed down. We need to put in very strong protection so that this never happens again. Uh, put, uh, Pete uh, Buttigieg on in, uh, it was either Forbes or Fortune, Fortune magazine, uh, says that you know Americans trust in the presidency can and will be rebuilt. Yeah. Um, let me let me go to Jay's point though, and these senators and House representatives and member of the administration have breached their oath of office. How do we legislate? an oath of office. You know, I, it pretty clear to me, you take an oath to, uh, to protect and defend the United States Constitution, 
from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I think this is right. These senators are, would face potential death threats or, or harm to them. But I mean, all that Donald has to do is say, hey, you know what, that senator over in blank state, he didn't support me. And I, I don't know, but that just seems like the wrong thing. Aren't there any proud boys in, in blank state? I mean, that's all he needs to do. And they're very aware that he's one to agree with that. Or something like that. And so there may be some real fear behind that. I mean, when Chris Coons is saying that they're coming up to him and saying, yeah, we're not going to let this happen. I think if there were any real concrete substantial move towards some uh, a dictatorial or uh, takeover that would not allow the transition to take place, that you would see these folks rising up en masse like the herd against the one lion. Because right yeah. now it's just the lion. You know, at what point does Joe Biden say, OK, um, I can't begin my work to for this transition. It's going to hamper my administration, which I think by design Donald Trump is trying to do. At what point does Joe Biden say, OK, my patience is over. I now have to file lawsuits in court to uh, to demand a transition. You know what? After the the um, Mitch McConnell, who is the worst, um, I think, because he actually knows what he's doing. Uh, he's playing both sides of it. He says we have until December 14th to certify these elections, to have the electoral college, you know, th that whole legal process, which is true. And so he can string that along, but in those intervening, in the intervening month, there's a huge amount of damage that's being done to the credibility of America, like you, you mentioned with the potential adversaries, but just also for folks sowing this, these deep, uh, deeper, deeper seeds that uh, these elections are, not only this one is fraudulent, but everyone going forward would be, which is absolutely not the case. If we were being fraudulent with the election, we would have taken back the Senate. We would have taken back House, uh, state houses. We would have done a lot more than just remove one man from office. So, you know, as far as those conspiracy theories go, they're gone. There's no credible evidence of any, um, any major uh, shifting here. But I think that uh, in answer to your question, which I probably didn't answer, um, I think that Joe Biden needs to just keep playing the hand that he's doing. He doesn't need the money. He's already staffing these positions. If he takes over with nothing, with every computer gone in the White House on January 20th, it'll, we'll still be okay. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, Jay, we just got a question in. And the question is, do you think Trump's myriad of tweets and voter fraud are harmful? And what kind of impact does social media have on voters? Huge, huge in this country, that's the way a good percentage of the country, maybe a good percentage of the, of the, of the, of the base, uh, get their information. And they make no distinction between you know, truth and falsehood. And they pick it up all of it and repeat it at you. Um, so, I mean, they're completely misinformed and they have not used their critical thinking and there's not too much we can do about it. So the answer is yes, the tweets have had a big effect and would have a big effect now. This is the way he quote leads, end quote. Okay. But let me let me hey, go to a second question. Also, I want to ask you another another question came in from a viewer. Yeah, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you were done with that. Your answer. I'm sorry. I had one other thing to say, but I'll wait. Okay. The other question was, do you think <sighs> Trump runs again in 2024? That's a really good question, and and the answer is it depends what happens now. It depends on the things that he does to embarrass himself and the country. It depends uh, what sort of, um, you know, um, uh, grandstand he does uh, while Biden is in office. If he can continue to lead his base to obstruct everything that the Democrats try to do, um, you know, I think that he will have a good chance because they, they will be neutralized for four years. And he'll come back and, and criticize them for being neutralized. Um, so it's a sad possibility, but it's it, it's possible. Uh, on the other hand, he's getting old, isn't he? Um, and his health is not that good. He may or may not be able to do it. I think he's really, I think he's really setting it up for for uh, Jared or his son um, yeah. rather than himself. But it would be a horrible thing to see anybody like Trump ever elected in this country again. Uh, we we have touched, we have looked into his eyes and seen the end of the republic. We cannot afford to have him again. It, next time, it'll be worse, would you say? But what I wanted to mention earlier is the, is the problem about, about Biden. What does Biden do? You know, the estimates by a number of the commentators have been, well, this will all 
sort of implode in a week or so, and and the Republicans will will have to, you know, concede and come around. Uh, and at that point, Biden will have what he expects to have. That is, you know, a, a basic agreement on the fact that he won the election. I'm, I'm not sure I'm confident about that. I'm I'm not confident about that. And the question really, uh, and it's rhetorical at this point, it's answers are speculative. What, <clears throat> what happens if they don't come around? What happens if he n- never has a transition? That woman Murphy stands in the way. He gets no funding, no briefing, no nothing. And Trump is able to separate him from the government. Um, and until you know, those deadlines and benchmarks are already passed, the constitutional deadlines are passed. What happened is, you know, I mean, a lot of people would say, screw this, I'm out of here. I'm not going to I'm not going to fight my election again. I've had it. I've had enough. If this country doesn't want to get its act together, if there are so many people who don't want to have the Constitution anymore, I'm going to Portugal. Um, You know, on the other hand, I don't think he's inclined to do that. I think he's inclined to go forward. And the question is, what forces are working on the Republicans to have that implosion? What forces are working on the Republicans to have them stop going along with Trump, stop the conspiracy, abide by their oaths of office. And I think it's one thing, if, if they continue this pattern of conduct, I'm talking about him, because he's a lost cause. If they continue the pattern of conduct of supporting him, I think it's clear enough to everyone, them and everyone else, that the country will, will be lost. You can't have this. And after a period of time, we will be in the abyss um, to keep him is to be in well, the I mean, it goes to my first question I asked you is the hypnotic effect Donald Trump seems to have on all these senators. But more importantly, at what point does it break? Does it stop? Does, does their oath to office, which you brought up, does that kick in? And if it doesn't kick in, um, what can be done about it? Well, I think there's two, two parts to the answer. Uh, one is um, it will kick in as and when the Republicans realize, not because of the oath of office, but as a practical matter, they won't be a country anymore, and they cannot benefit in the long term by that. I don't know if that's going to come to them. Remember that if the Red Sox lose the ball game, the Red Sox fans are still Red Sox fans, even though they lost the ball game. Um, and the other part of it is uh, what can be done about it. You know, search me. I'd, I'd be interested in uh, Stephanie or Cynthia or Winston answering that. Search me what can be done about it. Lawsuits. Yeah, I guess that's that's yeah, that's where I think we're all scratching our heads going, what is the avenue to resolve this problem? Biden is not uh, I don't think he's filed a lawsuit just yet. He said he might have to and he and he would. I don't know at what point he does that. Probably he should be doing it in a week or two uh, and let the Supreme Court decide. They're the backstop. And if they decide inappropriately, well, you know, screw this. I'm out of here. Um, that's, that's the only remedy. There is no right. other remedy. Uh, pick it, you know, uh, pickaxes in the street are not going to do the job. That's not going to restore our democrat- democratic government. It'll have to be our institutions. It'll have to be the Supreme Court. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Stephanie, right now, Donald Trump is cleaning house in the Pentagon. The Secretary of Defense, Esper, was, was let go unceremoniously via tweet, um, which is deplorable unto itself. Uh, What is the goal? What is the purpose of cleaning the top positions of the Pentagon and replacing them with loyal lackeys? What does that serve them in the next 70 days? Uh, What it serves is what I think Jay has already um, implied. And that's that, and, and what it is that Biden is showing us is his strength and his capacity to manage this thing and his wonderful eloquence and grace that's been already complimented. But what's happening is Trump, as we knew, is gonna do everything he can to be destructive. We've already predicted that. But what it is he really wants to happen is he wants Biden to do those cases. He wants those, he wants to bump this sucker up to the Supreme Court. He's got to have, uh, you know, the standing, he's got to have the issues, he's got to get all of those things aligned to get on their agenda. He's not just going to be able to walk in, although I think there is some special consideration for this level of of issue. But what I'm saying is that I have faith that uh, 
and might not have to buy my tank. But I mean, I have faith that Biden is going to stand tall <clears throat> as he is and be patient and graceful and eloquent and smart to keep this thing at, at the level uh, it will stay if he doesn't react. Right. And uh, what Trump to do is stand on his head swing from the chandeliers in the white house and please take me to the supreme court because that's where they're waiting to get me back in my cage the right way gotcha. okay thank you stephanie cynthia um i'm going to repeat the question to you as well and that is what is the goal or purpose of uh cleaning up multiple positions in the pentagon and secretary of defense and you know that your presidency is up with less than 70 some odd days what, what's the purpose of that? Is, is there a longer uh, strategy that it, we're all not seeing? Or is it just to muck things up and make things difficult for Joe Biden on his first day in the office? I think there's much more at stake here. If he can surround himself with yes men, especially in the military and the Pentagon, that's, that's some power. That's, that could yeah, be- but it's 70 days left. Yeah, but if there's some kind of explosion in the streets and he's controlling the military, the military that wouldn't respond to begin with is now going to because he's got, yes, <clears throat> when Esper, uh, the day after Esper was fired, he came out and said, if he surrounds himself with yes men, then all hell will break loose. No, uh, it will be all bad. I can't remember the exact- God help us. God help us. Thank you. That's what it was. Winston. Same thing. All hell will break loose. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> exactly. That was like a big thing for him to come out and say. And yet I think people like like we here on what's now Rediscovering America, um, we've sort of known that all along. We've seen the power of the yes men that surround him and how that protects him. Um, but this, I think, is taking it up to a whole nother um, All righty. We're almost out of time. And uh, Winston, you're going to get the last word here. Uh, same question to you, because I really want to see uh, your, your different perspectives about why Donald Trump is shaking up the Pentagon. What does that get him? And is, is there some other motive or agenda item that Donald Trump has by putting in loyal loyalists in the Pentagon? Is there something more nefarious than meets the eye here? Well, they're very well maybe, but honestly, you have millions of, of, of folks that have also sworn an oath to the Constitution there. At some point, there are groups where they're all into contact with each other and they say, as Jay said, do we want to have a nation anymore? Because if we do, we need to stop this man who is a, a uh, and remove him from office and say, I, I, maybe that's what um, Pence was doing down in Florida, was strategizing on how do they get him out if he's going um, uh, insane. And I don't know, he was gone for a week. I think that people will stand up and they will say, enough. We lost. We don't like it. Uh, the, the Republicans will do it in unison and they will say, we are, it, it, it will, if it comes to that. And, and they'll, they'll let Donald know beforehand, he will slink away. He's going to make a lot of noise until he is forced to do that. But I think in the end, our institutions will hold people's conscience, uh, consciences will step up and meet this moment. And, and uh, frankly, if they don't, uh, we won't be having the show much longer. So, um, uh, you know, this and everything else, our nation's very stake, uh, life is at stake here. And I think we need to just have faith in, in each other and in our processes. And I think that uh, in the end, it will be okay. Donald Trump will not be there and Joe Biden will take office on the 20th with a uh, solid support of most Americans. All righty, thank you very much. We are out of time. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair for their inaugural standoff of Rediscovering America. It's Veterans Day, and God bless all veterans. I'm Tim Apicell, your host, and we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Aloha.